Thank you for keeping it, KTN. And of course, we now like to take some time, take a look at business. But that conversation on Beringo insecurity will be coming up after KTN Sports News with Moses Wahisi. Let's now take a look at some top business stories. An airplane manufacturer, Boeing, has announced the opening of two new offices in Sub-Saharan Africa in Nairobi and Johannesburg, South Africa, in a bid to dip in its footprint in Africa. The Nairobi office will be staffed by Chimsu Anjurin, Director of Government Affairs, and contain market development offices. Miguel Santos, Managing Director of Sub-Saharan Africa and Director of International Sales of for Africa will sit at the Africa headquarters in Johannesburg. According to Boeing, the market outlook projects that air traffic to and from Africa is expected to grow by about 6.1% annually over the next 20 years, resulting in the need for 1,500 new airplanes. The Africa head notes that the aerospace industry needs to start paying closer attention to Africa because this continent is clearly on the move economically and all the trends are pointing in the right direction for the expansion of the sector. Deforestation is one of the major activities which has contributed highly to climate change resulting to drought in the country. And it is due to this that Mabati rolling mills have come up with a way of combating deforestation by introducing steel roofing technology. And according to marketing manager Harry Mushengi, the life of the new roofing technology is five times more efficient than timber as timber has threats of being environmentally unfriendly. The technology can ensure a building stays intact for a period of 50 years due to aluminum zinc coating which does not rust. The roofing technology's retail price per square meter is comparable to a mature timber which is less expensive compared to timber in the market today. It in, uh, Timau. Timau is a high rainfall area. Box profiles are suitable for places which require quick runoff of rain. So besides just aesthetically being you know, in, available in many different colors, this type of roof cover is what is suitable for this kind of climate. Insurance firm Sanlam has reported a double-digit growth in its financial results for the period ending December of 2016. And the company saw its net profits rise from 27 million to 71 million, representing a 44 million jump. The insurer also posted a 19% drop in its operating expenses to close at 2.3 billion shillings. And life business is where I see most hope for growth, for further growth as we move into 2017. We spent 2016 focusing on the fundamentals of the life business, much in the same way we focus on fundamentals of the joint insurance business in the previous year. And those fundamentals have borne fruit. We had a significant improvement in our general insurance business. Um, the other elements are the, um, the, 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 the costs uh, for a business that is majorly insurance, uh, one of our largest costs are, relates to claims and benefits. Uh, those ones increased marginally by 5%. The textile industry in Kenya has continued to struggle on the back of liberal import-export policies that have seen foreign textile dominate the market. And they are, however, small islands of resilience in the sector that have withered the storm. KTN's Ashley Mazuri now has an inside look at the textile industry. In the 1990s, liberalization happened, and Kenya and indeed much of Africa became a dumping ground for substandard or cheap products, leading to the closure of textiles industries in Kenya. Some of the factories include Mombasa Towels, TSS, UTI, Nandam. But as the companies continue to close down, one company has stood out and weathered the storm of liberalization. This is thicker cloth mills. As the going was not easy for the company, it had to lay off some of its workers to avoid permanent closure. A spot check at the factory located at Thicker's industrial area about a kilometer from Thicker town reveals how the factory, which used to employ more than 2,000 workers in its heyday, now operates and the history behind it. 
Jonathan Mutuku is a machine operator who previously worked for 15 years at UTI, located just yards away from thicker cloth mills. Mutuku says the factory closed due to high cost of raw materials and lack of money to purchase spare parts. Next to his department is a worker from Kikomi who had worked there for 16 years before its closure. Their call to the government is reduction of exercise duty charged on cotton which will enable the collapsed factories to reopen. Serikali ikifunga vitu kama mitumba hii. Naona tununue Kenya tuchenge Kenya. Kalpisha, who runs a renowned baby wear factory, added that due to importation of second-hand clothes, his company Kenwear diversified into uniforms, which has helped the company remain open. Shah urges the government to give the remaining textile industry subsidies and also streamline carry in order to nab illegal imports. The government has to really subsidize or help the local manufacturers in a lot of ways. We have to really streamline the people who are not doing the job properly. Thika Cloth Mills Managing Director Tijal Dodia narrated how after her studies in the UK, she found the companies founded by her father had collapsed due to liberalization. Dodia challenged the key players in the import-export sector to come up with policies to address liberal importation of textile products so as to protect local industries. If you're supplying uh, baked beans, buy a locally manufactured baked beans. Wherever you can buy Kenyan product, buy it. Kenyans, we want to develop our economy. The CEO stated that Kere and Kebs were slipping on the job by allowing Kenya and Africa at large to continue being used as a dumping ground for low quality products. Ashley Mazuri, KTN News. And business, but for more, you can log on to our website that is ktnnews.com. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Coming up next is KTN Sports with Moses Wahisi. And do not forget the conversation on Beringo insecurity will be ongoing after KTN Sports.